I'm here with Chris Lee, a former student from Gilroy Catholic College and recently spoke to our Principal's Masterclass and told us a little bit about Chris and his life. Um, could you give us a summary version? Yeah, so I uh, went to um, Gilroy Catholic College in um, high school, I went to Our Lady of Lords in primary school, I was raised in the Hills District. Um, I had a really good faith formation at my school and came through and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about leadership, um, not only about that, but the um, syllabus was great and the teachers really went that extra mile for me as well. So I still keep in touch with a lot of teachers today and uh, Guru was brilliant. It was, um, it was probably one of the most foundational um, building blocks of my personality today. So, yeah. Yeah. And how did it help you as your life unfolded? You know, it didn't go down the path you thought it would. No, it didn't. Um, I, made a, a, um, I made a mistake when I was 18 after finishing Gory, I was the vice captain there, and then it was in 2012. I um, got into a fight one night um, on Easter Saturday, actually. So it was an Easter long weekend, and um, we were out with some friends, and I got into a fight. Um, ended up losing sight in my left eye. Um, I had to have a facial reconstruction. I had three metal plates put in my face, and um, I remember then I was kind of having to look at my life from scratch, you know. Um, I had a um, certain goal or a certain plan that I wanted to. And that goal um, was? So I wanted to join the Defence Force mm. after school. So everything was lined up, ready to go. Um, but because I became blind, well, I couldn't end up joining. Mm. So everything was set, um, I couldn't get in anymore. Um, so I had to start from scratch and that made me go back to, you know, what I learned at school and the people that I surrounded myself with. I realised that I had to, um, maybe cut out a lot of those influences in my life, you know, and that's one of the things that I learnt from um, Mr Conway and um, Darren was to surround myself with good people and the fact that leadership sometimes is a hard thing, um, it's not something that everyone's cut out to do and it can be isolating sometimes, but if you want to move into that position where you take control of your life, then you um, need to make those decisions to be your own person, I guess. Yeah. So. You did the, the work yourself. Yes. Right? You, you had to front that and you, you told that powerful story and how you came to that realisation as you hit rock bottom. But you know, obviously the school has been important for you, you know, that anchor for you. What are a couple of things that the teachers did for you that sort of got you through that situation? I think there was a lot of times when the teachers, especially Darren, probably could have um, said, this guy's just too much work, you know? <laughs> I think there was there was a amount of times where I'd say, um, I'd go in and I'd get in trouble and then for s some way or another I'd get in trouble with one teacher but then I'd go and speak to Darren and then I'd some way um, find a way to um, reason with him so I didn't have to um, get in as much trouble as I probably should have, you know? Mm. And he probably saw something in me that I didn't see in myself or which a lot of other people didn't see in me. And that self-belief that he had in me, um, I remember so many times he would never, you know, placate me or anything like that. Um, it'd be something like, um, he'd tell me that I did the wrong thing. And even though I had some things going on in my life, he said, you know, um, there's reasons why we act a certain way, but they're never an excuse. Yeah. And that stayed with me for the rest of my life. That was something that, you know, it, it's something that makes you think about your choices. You know? yeah. Well, you lost your dad during the course of all this, yeah. which you said had a profound effect on, you know, why you actually was out that night, you know. Um, yeah. So the school understood that background, didn't they? Absolutely, yeah. Dad was sick for probably, um, he was probably sick for about four years. And he was in hospital, um, in and out. He was, um, he was very intelligent, but his, his health was just um, deteriorating. And he was, to give you some sort of idea, he passed away when he was 42, which is, you know, still yeah. relatively um, that's young. That's very young. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, but. This school knew everything that was going on. I, I was, it was pretty open. I could go and um, speak to them mm. about um, what was going on at home. Uh, they kept it to themselves, you know. It wasn't something mm. where they broadcasted around to the other students or anything like that. It was kind of just something that I felt that um, I could go and speak to them about and they were very understanding and support us the best way they could. When you spoke to the principals, what message did you hope that they wanted to get from your experience? Because you shared a really powerful experience of the, the support for the school, but you having to face that and then do it yourself. Yeah. What message did you want so that you know they could go back and do better at what they do? I think I just wanted the um, principals to know that what they do um, really makes a difference in their um, students' lives. And I guess it's hard because it's not something that you can really measure that much because yeah. it 
carries on, you know, in 20 years' time and everything like that. And I remember speaking to some of the teachers after um, high school and they were saying, you know, you, you would never really know the impact that you have on your students, you know? Mm -hmm. You'll never fully understand that. Um, some of them were talking to me about how they keep letters from, you know, 15 years ago to look at it um, when times get hard um, in the teaching industry, which I'm sure, you know, a lot of them have um, faced. But it was just kind of to say, you know, you might never um, get that thank you or you might um, never get that um, that output where someone comes and says, you know, thank you so much for the work you've done. But at the same time, I never doubt that you're making that difference, you know. Um, I know that there's so many students from Gilroy that had a um, huge impact left on them by Brad and by Darren, and they probably don't even know that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. If we made you a principal tomorrow and you, you had your staff meeting, there. What, are, what couple of things would you say to the staff before they were about to go out and take their classes? Um, yeah, a couple of things I'd probably say to them. Um, I think the first thing would be I'd try and build prayer into um, yeah. the, um, the, the culture, um, but I'd also, um, I'd, I'd, I just think that, you know, maybe sometimes that um, they can be swept along with everything that's going on mm -hmm. and um, might get a bit distracted and, and not see um, all the good things that are going on around them, you know? And I, I think there's probably so many things that they're not even um, seeing that they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And just to, you know, be grateful of what's going on with the um, students and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think they just need to maybe take a little bit more time for themselves and realise the difference that they're making. Yeah, it's good advice. They can get swept up in trying to get you through the program and manage the day. That's it. But ultimately, it's the effect they have as a person on you. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, that's right. I don't. I, I wouldn't want them to burn out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the thing that would keep you going in yeah. a job like teaching is knowing that uh, you're making. And what's the future hold for you, Chris? Now, um, I'm running a not-for-profit called um, Commission Group. So we basically work with um, young men's health. So we basically want to um, work around building down, breaking down the stigma of um, young guys talking about issues and men in general. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we live in a society where a lot of young guys and a lot of men um, feel like it's weak to talk about issues, um, mm. to ask for help. Um, one of the statistics is that you know suicide is the highest cause of death mm. for um, young men aged 15 to 25, and just men in general. Mm. You know, and for a country like Australia, I think that's a huge problem. As you look back on you know you, what happened, you know you were heading down the defence forces and life in the military. <laughs> You've taken a completely different path. Yeah. Are you are you sad that you're not doing that one? And um, is it somehow? Do you feel this is a second choice option? Oh, I don't know if it's a, a second choice, but I, I do think that um here there was too many coincidences for this not mm. to be something that I um, looked into. Um, but you were meant to do it somehow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I still don't know how I'm, I'm <laughs> sitting here with you, <laughs> but it's um it's it's something that you know, I feel very passionate about mm. and it's something that we saw a huge need for. Um, just in my own life, with seeing the way that, you know, I handled things and I handled, um, you know, situations that came in my life, I didn't handle them the best way I probably should have. Um, and I know that there's a lot of guys who volunteer with us who understand the cause and there's so many more who want to, mm. you know, because their friends have been affected by it, their families have been affected by it. And we just wanted to let guys know, you know, it's okay to talk about things, it's okay to um, mm. think things through and, you know, you really should just be your own man and make the decision that's um, best for you and your family. So, mm. yeah. Why do you think we need that? What, what's going on in the world that, you know, that uh, men don't have this, this opportunity or, yep. or, or are prepared to be open? Well, I, I think, uh, there's a um, there's a documentary at the moment which Gus Warren was doing, which is called uh, Manning Up, and he was talking a lot about um, stigma and the way that we view masculinity as a culture. Mm. Um, and I think we need to get back to understanding that compassion is a huge part of masculinity. Mm. You know, showing um, that sensitive side of yourself so you can connect with um, someone who is struggling. You know, um, I think in a world that's you know ruled by um, you know, how much money you have or um, how successful you are, I think we can lose sight of, you know, the human being that's sitting in front of us.
Mm. Um, and that's something that we try to instill in the boys, you know. Mm. No matter where you are, you know, you might be going to somewhere important, but if mm. you're missing the person that's sitting next to you or in the kitchen at work who's um, crying and um, you don't ask that person um, or if you don't realise that you're supposed to be there for that person, then I think that's an issue. You know, we all have important things to do. You know yeah. what I mean? There will always be another important thing to do. You mentioned if you were principal, you'd um, you know probably start with a prayer. So obviously, faith has played a big part in your life, um, and it's part of the Gilroy Catholic College. But could you talk to me a little bit more about how your faith has sustained you in this? Um, I was very lucky that I had um, the women in my life were devoutly um, spiritual, you know, mm. and they um, they they just encouraged me, kept encouraging me to um, go to men's groups and talk about the faith and look into it a bit more. So as I started as a young person doing a bit more research into faith and um, learning more about it and paying an active um, part in it, I realised that, you know, faith is something different to religion class, you know. Mm. It's something that's active, it's something that you need to work on and I think that's what a lot of young people need to understand um, today. What you learn in religion class and what you, um, the way you express your faith in this relationship that you have with God is something different, you know, and only you can take responsibility for that mm. and if you grow it and if you spend time in it, um, it's just like with any relationship. You know, if you want to help me, but I don't want to have that relationship with you, yeah. then there's only so much you can do. Well, it seems to me it strengthens that bond you're talking about, like a community. Absolutely. Because, you know, faith shared in community becomes much more powerful, and that's you're right. doing that in your work. Yes. Yeah. I, um, it's, it's something that's, you know, always been um, for the last few years at the forefront of who I am as a person, you know, yeah. and it's something which... Um, we got to share at World Youth Day, mm. and um, it, it was it's something that I think um, sustains you through a lot of hard times, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's where I... Good. I well, last week, Chris, um, I don't know if you know, was we celebrated World Teachers Day. Yes. I couldn't think of a better gift for our teachers than to share what you've just shared with us. So can I thank you very much? Thank you, Greg. Cheers, mate. I, I enjoyed it. It was Good. awesome. <laughs>